Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a spinner card, which you'll see exactly what that is um, later on in the video. But I'm going to start with a little bit of watercoloring. I have three different color distress inks that I'm just putting onto my non-stick craft sheet. I have the Abandoned Coral, Spun Sugar, and Mustard Seed. This is kind of one of my favorite color combinations at the moment. But I have a piece of Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock and I'm just applying this card or this watercolor with a water brush pen. Even though I did squirt water into each of those distress inks, I want it to be really saturated with water and blend really well on my cardstock. So I added the mustard seed first and then I'm just adding a little bit of that sponge sugar. It's a little bit harder to see that, especially when it's wet, but once it dries, it does show up a little bit better. And I also did add some more to my craft sheet. And then just adding in some of that abandoned coral. And when you mix that with the yellow, it turns into an orange color, so those two colors do mix really well together. And like I said, I'm randomly scattering this onto that cardstock. The middle part where it's kind of white right now will be die cut out, which is why I left it for last. Um, I know this paper looks like a hot mess right now, but I promise um, it does turn out a lot better. And watercolor is one of those things when you actually let it dry, it looks a lot better. So when it's wet, it kind of looks like a mess, like I said. Um, but once it dries, it does turn out a little bit better. I decided to color that in even though I am going to be die cutting it out just because then I can use it on another card so it will be all ready for me. And then I'm taking this dot stencil from Simon Says Stamp and placing that over the top and I did heat dry that background first. And I'm just going to spritz it with a little bit of water because distress inks do react with water so it will kind of pick up that color some more. And I'm just going to pick up all that water with my cloth. I got this one at Simon Says Stamp, but it's just a microfiber cloth. And you can see how it's lighter. So when I pick up that stencil, you'll be able to see how that image shows on there. And then I'm going to mat this with some pattern paper. This is from the Lawn Fawn Seaside or Beachside 6x6 paper pad and I'm using the coral color and I'm just going to adhere this onto uh, pattern paper and the reason I did this before die cutting is because I want the circle to go all the way through so I want it to go through both of those so I decided to adhere them down together that way I didn't have to try to match them up or anything so I'm just gonna die cut both of those sheets at once and I am using a standard circle the second largest one from Spellbinders you could also use a stitching, one of the stitch dies with this as well, but I just pulled out my spellbinders because those are my favorite ones. I'm just going to secure that into place with a little bit of washi tape so that when I run it through my cuddle bug it doesn't move at all. And then I went ahead and die cut that out. I have the next size circle that I die cut as well, and I die cut that with the Coordination's 110 pound cardstock. So you can see how there's going to be that little bit of gap there, which is going to be where the spinner part is. But the image I'm using on this card is from Mama Elephant. It's this cute little kitty. And I'm going to stamp that onto my cardstock with the Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And I'm just going to stamp that down right in the center. And then while I have this set out, I'm also going to stamp the little yarn ball on some more Coordination's 110 pound cardstock. And then I'm also going to use a different Mama Elephant set for the sentiment that says thinking of you. And I will have all the supplies that I used linked down below if you are interested in any of them. But I'm just going to go ahead and quickly color this in with my Copic markers. I'm using a coral color to color in the little yarn ball. I'm just doing a little bit of shading with a darker color. And then I'll go back and blend that together with the original R32 that I used. 
And then I'm going to cut that out um, a little bit later. So for the cat, of course I need to color that in to look like my Siamese cat. So I'm starting with a base of the E31, which is like a light tan color. And then I um, am going to color in the darker areas with the T8. So you can see I'm just adding that to the center of the face. I know it looks super scary right now, <laughs> like it shouldn't be there. But then I'm just adding the darker brown colors around that to blend that out. With that darker gray color, when you go over it with the different brown colors, the lighter colors, it does blend and kind of fade out a little bit more so it's not so stark against the other light brown colors. And I also colored in the ears, the tail, and the paws with the T8. It's starting to look a little bit more like a Siamese, but I'm just going to blend that out with the E35 and the E33. And then blend everything with the E31 once again. And if you don't like the way that it looks, just keep blending it with your markers. And it will the color will eventually fade out if the black is a little bit too dark for you. And then I colored in the nose with the 100 black. So I'm going to go around the edge of this yarn ball with a piece of twine just to make it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm using my multi-matte medium and just squirting a little line of that around the outside edge of the yarn. And the twine I'm using is from the twinery. And I'm just going to place that into my glue and then just follow the way around the edge. And this glue is really strong and it stuck really, really well. So it wasn't falling off or anything like that. And once I get all the way around, I can go ahead and trim off the excess. I want to leave a little bit hanging though so that it looks like it is coming unrolled, like the kitten was playing with it. Alright, so now it's time to assemble the shaker card, or not the shaker card, <laughs> the spinner card. I have a white A2 size card base, and I'm going to adhere the watercolor piece with some 3D foam squares. These are the large ones from Best Creation. The only thing you want to be aware of is that the spinner part has to kind of go alongside that circle so you don't want any of the foam squares too close to the edge because otherwise the spinner part is not going to spin it'll get stuck on those foam squares so you can see I have a little bit of area that doesn't have foam squares on it so once I remove the backings from those I can go ahead and adhere that down onto my A2 size card base Alright, and then I have to adhere the center part, which is also going to be popped up. And then I have this penny here. You can use a coin, um, anything of that size. But I put the large foam score on, but it wasn't working, so I'm going to show you um, how to fix that. But I'm just putting some foam scores on the back of my circle with the cat on it. And again, you want to make sure that they're not too close to the edge, otherwise your spinner part is not going to spin. And you don't have to use a coin, it was just something that I had and it was heavy enough. You want it to be heavy enough so that it can spin around, it has that weight. So I took the large foam score off and I added one of the small ones, which fit perfectly. Because you can see you want that to be able to fit along that um, area, otherwise it's going to get stuck. So I just put the penny down with the foam square and then I'm going to put the little yarn ball on top of it and then you can see how it spins around there and I think this is such a fun card especially for kids because they kind of like the interaction hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and will try making your own spinner card make sure if you like this video that you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my newest videos and I will see you guys back here next time bye